Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure, where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. Do I look like the kind of brother that would be unsure about something like that? Today we are going to take a look at something very different. I don't think we have done it ever in this channel. So I got contacted by Wally's communication company. Honestly didn't know about them before this. When I checked their website, it seems like they are developing a vast variety of uh, router boards and uh, many other things, industrial wireless access points and uh, network cards, Wi-Fi cards and things like that. And they are all industrial grade. They are using Qualcomm uh, like IPQ4019 that we are going to take a look, one of the boards that they have sent that uses that. It seems like these all have very powerful Wi-Fi capabilities. Uh, they go from 4.9 gigahertz to 5.8 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz to 2.482 gigahertz and so on. They have MMX connectors support various bandwidth so as you know each channel it uh, you can have different channel bandwidth uh, in 5 megahertz 10 megahertz 20 megahertz 40 megahertz 80 megahertz it supports all of that they have a lot of things like you can use your own not your own you can install the operating systems that you like there is a open wi-fi uh, qualcomm sdk is also there open wrt you can install and seems like it's a fair uh, price as well so let me show you what they sent me so they sent this box literally i just take a peek at it but i didn't unbox anything uh, so we're going to take a look at it i don't know what is in there uh, i just told them send me a couple of the good ones that you boards that you have so we can take a look at it on this channel so this is uh let's see what they have sent over okay oh wow okay a lot of antennas do we need these like different connector types i guess so these are the smaller ones and up to bigger ones these are all sizes wow that's awesome does it come in this package or they send it to me i think it comes in this package i don't know but uh can ask them so let's see what else is in there all right yes nice sfp port i was asking them if you have anything with sfp and they said they have one so this is here so this is with sfp and two gigabit ethernets over here and this is the the processor underneath dr40x9 v4 and this is the one i was talking about they were also telling me that uh, it does have support from 4.9 to 5.8 there these are the antenna connectors as you can see over here very powerful wi-fi capabilities they were saying and there is an sd card slot over here which you can use to uh install i guess uh they gave me some methods some documentation i mean it's on their website as well, so it is not something secret or anything, not something shared privately, it's all open in there. But yeah, it seems like you can uh, get a UART shell on this and then uh, being able to just uh, use UART cable and TFTP to flash images into it. I don't think that was micro SD card, is it? It looks like, uh, could be a SIM card slot. Yeah, that looks more like a SIM card slot. But yeah, a close up of this board over here. Okay, here is the IO, USB 3 and power. First, let's keep going. Let's see what else they have sent. Is it what I'm thinking it is? Oh yeah, lots and lots of antennas. Okay, these are yeah, basically you just uh, connect this one to here and then the other end goes over here. Okay. So that's the Wi-Fi antennas and a bunch of them, but are they any different? Is there any markings on them that like is, I don't know, like maybe one is for five gigahertz, one is for two. Not really, not really, not really. Uh, they all look identical. Yeah, I don't see any markings or identifiers, so I'm assuming they are all same. So it's, it's not different for 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. Yeah, okay. All right. It's same. This is, by the way, is one of the boards that they sell separately at on boards, which we are going to connect here and you will see. Yeah, here you go. So this is the DR7915, 2.5 uh, gigahertz and 5 gigahertz uh, from Wally Stack. So they are the ones developed this. So as you can see, these two, three actually, <laughs> small antennas, and they have sent those in here. These two goes here, one and two, okay? The other ones, the bigger ones, okay, that one actually were 
that got installed smoothly. I usually struggle with these. Okay, that was very smooth. Okay, so yeah, you do this. And are those slots I have marking 14 and 25? I guess so. This is the first. So we are gonna go install our inserted here. As for mounting it, we're gonna need a standoff, which I assume, yep. Okay, so these are the ones that in both sides, and you have to in both sides uh, screw it. So let me actually install this. Let's go into fast forward mode. Okay, so something like that. And the other one doesn't have a standoff, so I guess one is enough, they say. So yeah, that's how it looks like. The important thing is in this board, it's all upgradable, replaceable. So you can change this with some other modules. They have 5G modules, 4G modules, uh, different Wi-Fi cards, different capabilities, different power. So you can have separate Wi-Fi cards installed on this. You can customize and create your own router the way you want it to be. And this is industrial. So the CPU have a longer life, sh life shelf and availability. Operating temperatures are higher and things of that sort, okay? So it is industrial board and uh, we are going to take a look at the software as well. I'm gonna be honest, I'm only familiar with OpenWRT. So I am going to install that and take a look at it and see how it goes. Um, I'm going to be honest, these things uh, get installed very smoothly. It's uh, clicky and easy like that. Yeah, even these tiny ones that I usually struggle with nail and stuff, I have to uh, do it. But yeah, this one uh, doesn't seem to have that problem. And there are two more antennas over here and over there. Wow, that's a lot of antennas. I am going to attach every one of these. So let's go into fast forward mode. Okay, so we got ourselves an octopus over here. Six huge tendrils move toward him, weaving their bloated heads through the silent cabin like a giant octopus. This is for those, you know, enthusiasts of, you know, Wi-Fi and the speed and customization and running your own firmware on your own modems and routers instead of going with something commercial like Unify or Alternatives. This is for you guys, those of you who are into it. I got this ready. Uh, we're gonna do UART, get shell, and try to follow their guide. And I will show you how. We're gonna flash an uh, you know, operating system into it, which is gonna be OpenWRT. I will be right back. Okay, so we are back. As you can see, I was able to get everything working and I will show you what I'm talking about. And in terms of power consumption, right now it's five watts idling, we're gonna see. And I'm using this Schnittpur, the, the mighty one that we used in other videos as well. So what I did was, uh, this, I turned this into LAN, the left one. This one is ETH1. And this one is ETH0, and I turned this into WAN. So this is internet, this is LAN. And I did not use this because, unfortunately, I have multiple types, but they are all 10G, 10G. And this SFP fiber is 1G base, and they are not compatible. So it says, uh, this is from Unify, it says 10G, it means it's 10G. This one is from uh, Entera. And that one is also says 10G, that means 10G. That doesn't work, okay? Because of that, I had to disable this and use this LAN. So I'll, let's go to my computer. Let me show you a couple of things that I did. So first of all, this is the TTY shell, right? This is from the UART. And uh, I will, after we are done, I will take it out and I will show you the cables. But basically order is ground TX RX. And if you have the same cable, it is going to be black, orange and yellow cables. Okay. So you plug those cables in and I connected it via USB. And this is what you see on my screen. I have a whole dedicated video for UART and this type of thing. If you haven't checked it out, go please check it out if you are interested in these type of stuff. So we have the UART shell and basically I, I can run commands in here and see all the things that are happening. As you can see, ETH0, 192.168.17581, that's my WAN, which is actually it's still connected to my router, which is uh, that is then connected to WAN, but doesn't matter. This one is LAN and that's the 192.168.11. 
So the computer that I'm recording from that you are seeing now, that is a guest of this machine. Okay. So it's getting from this, this here, the LAN. Okay. So that, that is also how I am going to be able to access this admin panel, which is 192.168.11. And default username and password is root and ASDF1234. Okay. So now we can log in and you will see that OpenWR to Chaos Calmer and the version and all that Lucy. Okay. And one thing I want to show you and tell you is actually this uh, is actually this. So in order to flash this image or any image, what you have to do is basically run a bunch of commands, which is set environment server IP, which is my computer's IP, which is where I'm running the TFTP server, and then set env IP address 172.16.1.104, which is temporary address for the device, and then save environment, and then running this command, which is TFTP boot, and this is copy paste from their PDF that, that you will see it in their manual. It's, uh, it's there on their website. Okay. So, and I installed this free and open source TFTP server. And if you do show directory, you will see my files are here. The two files are here. Okay. That's basically where I copied the open WRT and Nornand thing in there. And that's how I was able to do it. I have a short video recording that I'm, I'm already done with that. I will right now put it on the screen so you will see when I did it and how it worked, but that's, it is how, uh, how you can do it. All right. After that, you will see this. And also it comes with a free pre-installed operating system. just in case, just so you know, uh, you will be able to go to the network and you will see the, the LAN and the WAN. So this is the WAN and that's the LAN. This is the, this port and that's that. And what I did was I basically went to Wi-Fi and I just enabled 5.1 gigahertz on channel 36, 80, 80, uh, channel width is 80 megahertz, okay? And I did an enable encryption, it's open, I'm just testing, right? So here's what I'm gonna show you. Okay, so this is my phone. Uh, okay, as you can see, I am connected to Wally's tech, okay? And this is Wally's tech, and I am connected to this uh, router, okay? Now, if I go to Wi-Fi manager, which is a Unify speed test. Okay. See, that's what I'm talking about. And power consumption went up to 6.5 Watts. And that's what I'm talking about. That's good. That's good. So, uh, so you know what I'm talking about. So that's the speeds that you're going to get, uh, five, 600, 600 up and down, basically something around that range. I know I'm very close to it. And also you have to keep in mind, these antennas are not in optimal position. They are just laying on my table with all that. I'm still getting a very good speeds on the Wi-Fi. So that's kind of pretty much it. So it is very, uh, uh interesting. I, I just, it was very smooth on, on set, how to set things up. Uh, you just have to use the admin panel to configure the Wi-Fi. You can enable the 2.4. You can enable two uh, Wi-Fi uh, separate. Uh, you see, as you can see, there is a Wi-Fi zero, Wi-Fi one. So we go to edit. Okay, here. So you can, instead of disable, enable it. Uh, ch choose the channel width. So this is the 2.4 gigahertz channel. So you can choose the channel from one to uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you will be able to select the type, which is not client. You are going to turn it into access point WDS. And uh, it is going to be basically open. All right. I, I, if you want more encryption, you can choose WPA2. Uh, I don't see WPA3 here. I guess it's not supported or maybe not here on the open uh, WRT, but yeah, it's not there. Anyway, so you do that, you set it up, you set the SSID name and save and you start a, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And uh, what I did was I just did it on five gigahertz. And uh, I, yeah, as you saw, that was the speed I was getting on my Pixel 9. And that was the IP address that is this is giving me through the LAN uh, interface. And yeah, everything is working. And if you if you have the proper uh, adapter for this uh, gigabit uh, interface, you can go to the services 
yeah, system services and here enable fiber so you can enable this if you enable it then this will be eth0 then that will be your wan okay so you have to connect internet to it but if you don't have it you have to disable this save it and then this will be your wan and uh, if it is not you can come to this to the network and edit the interface and set it such so you can say the physical settings right now as you can see eth0 is when eth1 is lan so we are editing when right now and it is on eth0 i can swap these two basically uh, it will i will lose the connection obviously i'm not going to do it but you will be able to select eth1 for instance for this and then go to the LAN settings and make that ETH1, okay? So as you can see, it's ETH1, you can swap that. Anyway, it is, uh, it is very easy to set things up. You saw the Wi-Fi speeds, everything is working, UART is working, and uh, you will be able to just uh, use the OPKG, the OpenWRT and stuff. You will be able to install packages, uh, and let's see if we have the update. Yeah, okay. All right, all right, all right. It's already started some signature failures, probably NT, uh, NTP related. Let's see. Well, that's a correct date and time, I guess. No, actually the time zone is wrong, but anyway, so you get the idea. You with the OPKG, you will be able to install packages, do whatever you want. Internet is there, van is there, LAN is there, and Wi-Fi speeds are there. I just wanted to show you guys this. And uh, one uh, last thing that I want to give you a close up. I guess we're done with the tests, so I am going to remove these cables and uh, just give you a close up of this, okay? So when you, what you see here, that these, these three, so ground is the one far down, closer to the ethernet port, okay? Closer to the Wi-Fi card, and then TX and RX, so orange and yellow. You plug that in there, and you get the UART cable. Uh, in my case, it was, uh, by the way, it's 3.3 .3 volt. Don't put a five volt uh, UART to this. So C232HMDDHSL0, this is 3.3 .3 volt uh, UART. Connect it to there, and rest is, I just showed you. ETH0 if you enable fiber. If not, this is ETH0, then this is ETH1, and you will be able to set up with multiple, you can put a 5G card here, 4G card here, or another Wi-Fi card here. They sell all sorts of wireless modules. Even if it is not this board, you can use their the wireless modules and the different projects, other cards, other SBCs, they, are, they have compatible uh, Wi-Fi cards. So you will be able to use uh, this, and you saw the, I said this is like a six antennas. So you saw the internet speeds, Wi-Fi speeds. It is perfect, it's very nice. And uh, it was really relatively easy and simple to set things up. There might, there was some minor glitches. I it's just learning curve, you you will learn it. The TFTP settings and all that. But the best thing is the Wally's tech was very, very helpful. They connected and helped, uh, helped out with the commands and everything. As you can see in Schnittpur, it's a 24 volts. That's the minimum. So you have to do 24 up to 48, they support it. So whatever is between 24 to 48 volts, it accepts it, okay? And uh, yeah, that should be it. Please let me know if you have any questions down below. Uh, I will try to answer them. If I don't know the answer, I will ask the Wally's Tech. So I just wanna say thank you to Wally's Tech one more time for sending this DR40X9 board, a beautiful board and enthusiasts whoever wants to set up their own wi-fi network their own routers open source whatever you can by the way they have a full video and documentation on how to compile openwrt for yourself so even if you don't want any image ready-made image just you download the openwrt and build it for this board and put and basically burn it into this and start using it so if you are into that this is one of the best boards for that. All right. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.